So last time I showed you how oil-based fuels such as petrol and diesel can power our internal combustion engines. When ignited, these plus other fossil fuels such as coal and gas are very good at providing energy. However, there are some issues with using fossil fuels as our main energy source. When we burn fossil fuels, we produce greenhouse gases, which are a cause for global warming, so they aren't environmentally friendly. We're also running out of fossil fuels. It takes about 150 to 300 million years to produce oil, coal and gas. And as a global population, we've burnt through the majority of that in about 200 years. Also, when a material becomes rare, it becomes more expensive. So the cost of fueling our transport will increase as we run out of fossil fuels. When we looked at internal combustion engines, we saw that when we spark petrol and diesel, we produce enough force to allow the pistons to move back and forth. So if we were to find an alternative fuel to burn, then we could ration them out of fossil fuels we use and make the supply last longer. One suggestion has been to use biogas as an alternative fuel source. When something degrades, bacteria gradually breaks it down, forming gas in the process, which can be collected and burnt as fuel. A main source for this type of fuel gas is landfill sites, where everything that we throw away is covered in soil and slowly degrades over time. So one such gas is methane. So let's see how much potential energy there is when I burn this fuel. We can also use compressed air in our internal combustion engines because all that needs to be done is to move the pistons. When you push air into a small space, the pressure will increase and this can be released to push each piston away. To show this, I have a compressed air rocket launcher. My projectile is just a simple paper rocket and I'll be using a bicycle pump to pump air into the launcher. When I close this valve, we'll give no option for the air to escape, which means the pressure will start to build and when I release the valve, then we'll use the air to fire the rocket forward. So there are alternatives to using petrol and diesel to power our cars, but there's other ways of limiting the amount of fuel we use in our transport. Join me next time, where we'll show you how you can reduce the amount of fuel our transport actually uses.